So today I'm changing out my timing belt on our 2010 Honda Accord. As most people already know, the Honda crank pulley or harmonic balancer bolt is extremely hard to get off and a lot of impacts can't do it. So I'm going to put this pulley holder on here in case it helps. Um, we'll definitely need it if we have to resort to the, the breaker bar, but it might help with the impact as well. I have four different levels we can try here and the first off I'm going to try this cheaper top shack. It is a brushless impact and it does pretty well with lug nuts and things like that but it's nowhere near the nut busting torque of like a Milwaukee M18. We'll give this a shot here with just a regular deep impact socket. and. Nope. I have it on the highest level here and also let's push the button. The battery's fully charged. So I think I'm going to skip doing the weighted socket with this one and go straight to the M18 that I have. And I got it on level two with a fully charged battery. This is the early generation fuel. So it is the 2763 20. And it has up to 1,100 foot-pounds of nut-busting torque. And I'm going to try it with just a cheap uh, deep well 19 millimeter impact. It's a tight spot here. I see rust line, but nope. So next up, on the same impact, I want to try this Lyle. 77080 it's a 19 millimeter harmonic balancer socket and this is known to be helpful getting these off so we're going to try it today tip number one is definitely wear eye protection while doing this i just got my regular glasses on but it's still protecting my eye from anything that might fly it's a lot of force being exerted here yeah, so that's not going to fit so in the 50 millimeter crank pulley tool. Not with this tool. It's not really needed so much to remove it, but it will be needed for sure to, to go back when we're tightening at the end. Let's try this socket. And... <laughs> yeah. Tip number three, weighted socket's a lifesaver. Look at that. I'm just going to put it back for now. Before we can start the job today, we had to get that done. So tip number four is always have a backup impact with higher nut busting torque. So I also had a 2767-20, which has up to 1400 loosening or nut busting torque. And by the way, the tip here, if you do have the 2767-20, make sure it is a serial number H96A and not the B. Uh, torque test channel has an episode on this where Milwaukee did admit their bees are having some issues and hopefully by now they're all gone or been replaced but if you do have a bee just a heads up you might want to look at this on torque test channel um, the information with the official statement from Milwaukee and definitely get a replacement if you do happen to still have one so just want to mention that so that would have helped out maybe if mine did not get it but back to tip number three that weighted socket is a lifesaver and that is awesome and while we're mentioning um torque test channel they also did an episode for science that was talking about this exact same thing did the weighted socket help and in their test here they did test the ingersoll ran weighted socket and it absolutely did um, help create more beans so Interesting to know they also have a newer video out that just came out while I'm editing this one and I just watched it today I, It actually even mentioned this Lyle socket that I have videoed here last week Pretty interesting that they talked about it a lot as well as some theories and some other aspects of the weighted socket So watch that video as well to see how that played out So as I mentioned I got to change out my timing belt So a lot of this has to move out of the way here of course um I have to take off the serpentine belt and the tensioner for it as well as get this power steering pump out of the way. So I'm going to take this reservoir here. As you see it's sliding up already out of the little dovetail mount. I'm going to move it and probably take the suction hose loose here and 
unbolt two bolts here and just take this whole thing and move it up out of the way. Of course, now that we have the uh, crank pulley bolt loosened, we can start draining. I wasn't even going to drain my coolant until I knew I could get that bolt to loose. So I just did a Pac-Man shape on my 2 liter bottle here and so it's capturing and holding on its own and we're just slowly trickling out because I'm in no hurry. It's only about two gallons and it's going to take me a while here. So another tip here I want to mention, these serpentine belt removal tools are tremendous help, especially with these hydraulic tensioners. You got to go slow and steady and then hold the force and that leverage really helps. So I'll get a better angle here so you can see it, but I just push forward and just keep that hydraulic tensioner up and there we go. Just helps a lot to be able to change your angle here. One thing to mention here is if you do use this part of it, that's half inch. You got three eighths and then it goes to a half inch extension bar right here, like so. So I don't have many half inch sockets. The shallow well, so I wasn't thinking about that before I started this job, but I did have what I needed. Another tip here is I bought the Dayco 84 inch belt. And I will tell you, I played heck getting this belt back on at the end. If you'll look here, the gates here shows us it has a 84 and 5 8 inch belt. So I probably should have went with the gates because I really did catch heck getting that belt back on there. So that'll be tip number six. I think the gates belt, or at least a 84 and 5 8 inch belt. Even though my belt was in good condition, I was going to change it anyway. It's 12 years old. But I will show a piece of metal did get in one of my grooves. And if you look here, that metal was going all the way through the belt. So over time, that was just going to be a bigger and bigger hole there. So definitely glad to just go ahead and change it out and be done with it. And this is the smooth pulley I was talking about that um, at the end, I even caught heck getting my belt back on that pulley. So even though it's smooth, I had to pull really hard with the tensioner all the way forward and still struggle to get that the 84 inch Deco on there. But it did go. So after I remove this tensioner, then I can remove my tinning belt covers and the rest of this engine mount here that's already loose. As you can see, I already got my power steering pumping all out of the way there. And there's a shot with the serpentine belt tensioner removed. Getting a lot more room to work here now. So I want to point out here with my bottom cover removed from my tinning belt, you'll see the coolant that leaked out there. I didn't catch it on video, but you can see the residue there. Well, a little bit did run out, and that's coming from most likely the weep hole and the water pump. So it's a good thing to swap that water pump out. Even though the timing belt looks in really good condition to me, it's a good time to go ahead and, of course, do them both while we're in here, absolutely. A little quick video here of my marks being lined up at top dead center on the right here and on the left or the rear part. You see, they, if I can get the camera in there, you see it lined up to the mark. And I was 180 out to start with. I had to rotate my bottom crank. I put the pulley on there and all so I could rotate it one more time to get those in line. So, as you can see there, the keyway is straight up. So, I'll show you the marks there. And by the way, this washer, see how it's cupped out? We gotta put this washer back when we get done. But as you can see, my marks there are lined up. And that's what we look like with the timing belt removed. But I will give you tip number seven here is mark your belts well before you take them off. And do it according to Everett on his video on Everett's workshop. He had one of the best videos, in my opinion, on the Honda Accord V6 timing belt replacement. It was very thorough. And I did like his tip about the timing belt marks i definitely subscribed to his video and liked it it was very helpful there were several others that i found helpful including the fisher he probably had one of the quickest videos with the most information in it so i definitely subscribed and i liked his video as well and i invite you to look at it also if you're doing a similar job there were several good ones including repair geek uh robinson's auto there was even some really good videos out there about the um harmonic balancer puller itself and that socket that I thought was very interesting that people have had issues with in the past also. But I will take this time to tell you the reason my video got shortened is I actually came down with COVID during this repair. So I got so congested I had to just stop videoing about halfway through mine and just get my job done. 
but I promise you while I was on the men, I was definitely watching these other videos to share with you the ones that I thought were super helpful and that I really liked. So I wanted you to have the experience with me today doing mine and some of the things we learned. But since I couldn't totally share all of it with you, I definitely wanted to share some of these other helpful videos. Another thing too, when I took my pulley off the first time after I, I rotated mine, I will say that my key did fall out. So I didn't realize all this was so easy to move. I think when I was taking my timing belt off, mine kind of slid outward and my key fell out. So yeah, just please make sure that key does stay in place and goes back like so. If you see, it's not just a straight key. It has a taper to it. So yeah, I'm kind of fast forwarding to the end here, but definitely make sure you label the job. You want to know when you've done it and what was done. You see all mine's back together and I have test run this one at this point, but See my Deco belt down here and my fluid is good. I did have some air in mine and had to add a couple times just a little bit. Wasn't too much. So either you can vacuum it in and not worry about it or you might have to burp it a little. But I do want to share with you that this Lyle socket was tremendously helpful and this ASIN kit was a great kit. It come with a water pump timing belt, the instruction card, and the hydraulic tensioner. And I really thought the instruction sheet was very helpful. It shows you the path and it shows you a lot of detail about the particular item, whether it's the hydraulic tensioner torque. It has a lot of information here on this instruction sheet and it was very helpful. I will say to look at this very well before you get started with the job. It's not something you typically do because like right here, 47 foot pounds plus 60 degrees, right? So when you put this back, you need something to torque to 47 foot pounds and you're going to need to go one flat or 60 degrees however it's easy for you to keep up with right you got to rotate and, it, and it's a it's a lot to get 60 degrees out of that i can tell you it's something like an extended leverage breaker bar and then of course with a cheater pipe on that as well i think i ended up with about three feet i got a 30 inch like this and then i had another three feet extension bar on mine to uh to finally get all the way because it's gonna pop you know you gotta spring it and pops on you to get to that 60 degrees so something to think about and be ready for and as well uh, on the other end of the spectrum i only had a half inch torque wrench and i didn't realize mine was 25 to 250 foot pounds i believe so i thought i had everything i needed for this job but if you look here i overlooked the part about 19 foot pounds and then nine foot pounds for the little hydraulic tensioner for the timing belt pulley or tensioner so I really wasn't prepared, so I ordered this 3 8 torque wrench I'm showing here to at least have one. It ain't got to be perfect. It just needs to work decent, and um, that way I know more about my 9 foot-pounds because I didn't really have anything to, to gauge by on that. I'll have links down in the video description for some of these tools and items that I found very helpful. Any of these links you click on are affiliate links, and they help support the channel, and I greatly appreciate it. So thanks so much for watching and God bless.